Now let's expand on something called data flow. And we're going to talk about iterations currently. So let me just delete these and uh, go and reset these numbers so that nothing is rotated and everything is right there in the center. I'm not even going to use this with any numbers. I'm going to make sure that everything is zeroed out just so everything is nice and sitting properly in our viewport. So this matrix op uses these three numbers, the position, scale, and rotation, and some other parameters we're not going to talk about today, to create this one single object. But the node system allows us to feed a range of numbers within any parameter. So my objective now is to create copies of this sphere, but in a more procedural manner. How do I do that? Well, first of all, I need an iterating construct. And the simplest of all iterations is the range. So I'm going to go here and type range. And you will look under the flow control and grab the range. The range is uh, something very similar to the range loop in Python or any for loop in any programming language. And basically it says, where do I start? And uh, if you say end is 10, it's going to iterate from 0 to 9, which is in total 10 iterations. So that range is actually output through the range port, and the count gives us the total number of steps. So what I'm going to try and do now, because I don't know what I'm doing, is take the range and stick it in the matrix. And you can see that we cannot convert an index into a matrix, because a matrix, and if I click here, you will see not only what this is called, but what it looks like. If you hover over here, you will see that a matrix consists of four vector threes in a very specific configuration. And uh, the node system cannot convert an integer, which is what the range exports, all the numbers from zero to nine. There's no way to convert this into a matrix uh, in any meaningful manner. So we need to do a couple more steps. One is we need to break this matrix into its constituent parts. Because in my particular case, I just want to create spheres by moving them in their position. So I don't want to scale them or rotate them. I just want them to be at different positions. So we need to compose a matrix. So let's type compose. And you will find in the math the compose matrix. Let me drag it in. Now this allows us to input three different vectors, translation scale and rotation, and feed it into a matrix. Now if I click here, you will see that this creates a matrix. This expects a matrix, so these should work. Fantastic. So now the control for those numbers has been removed by the matrix operator and has been transferred to the input. So I can go here and do whatever I want to do. Undo, everything is fine. So let me take this range now and let me stick it into the vector. Now from integer to vector, we can actually do the translation. And funny enough, I'm getting 10 copies of this. But these 10 copies happen to be in the following configuration. When you are converting any number, whether it's an integer or a real number, just any number, any single number, into a vector, you can see this little dot here. It has these two circles. That means that we have a auto conversion. And what it will do, it will take all the three elements. Let me disconnect this. It will take all the three elements of the vector and put the same number. And because this is from 0 to 9, it's going to create 0, 0, 0, the next iteration is going to be 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, up until 9, 9, 9. And that's why it's going diagonally, because it's just adding one centimeter for each and every one of the iterations. But you can see the power of creating these iterations. How would I go about driving only one of these parameters? I wanted to move on the x, for example. Well, we can use the same concept we used to translate the matrix into the three vectors. So I need something to compose. So you write compose and you check to see compose vector. And we are on the market for a compose vector 3D because it has three elements, one for X, one for Y and one for Z. Let's bring it in. You can see now these are white because they expect integers or reals. Let's take this. Let's stick it in here. Now you can see I have control over each individual coordinate. Fantastic. Let me put the range now in the x. 
So now we have this horizontal distribution. Let me go here and zoom in. You can see they're all moving that way. And there are 10. You can go and count them. Freeze the video, count them, just to make sure. Excellent. Let's go back to the 3D view. Now, the other problem is that the range generates integers. So it will generate 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. It can't generate numbers 10, 20, 100, 200 in series. So we need to take this range and convert it in some sort of way to a different scale. So essentially, we need to multiply it. There are other ways you can do this, similar to the range mapper. I'm going to do it with a simple multiplication. So let's move these to the side. Let's go here and type multiply. We use an arithmetic node, and it's going to be set to multiply because that's what we were searching for. I'm going to put the range in here. I'm going to put the result in the x. And because the multiplier is 0, nothing is going to happen. If I make it 1, it's going to be exactly the same as before. But if I make it 100, now we have spheres distributed every 100 centimeters. I can make this 200 and so forth. So here we are seeing the concept of data flow. We're seeing the concept of iterations. This generates not a single number, but a series of numbers. And we are using this multiply to change the scale of each number by a simple multiplication. Then we are feeding this into one of the three components of a vector, the x in this particular situation. We're taking this vector, we're feeding it inside the compose matrix for the translation, and then this matrix is fed into the matrix op and outputs this number of objects, which means that if I go here, I can change the number of these clones, and if I go here, I can change the distance between them. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you here is how these iterations, these loops, relate to each other, because you can have more than one of these loops. So let's assume that I want this not only to go on the x, but to go on the y as well. So it grows diagonally. What I can do is take this multiply and stick it in the y. So now we have this uniform 45 degree ascension. But what if I want to control the y separately from the x? Well, now the multiplication affects both the values, so it's always going to move that way. But what I can do is remove that connection, create another multiply, copy-paste, feed the same range into here, feed the result into here, and then have a different number for the y and a different number for the x. And that's all nice and dandy. Then you would ask, well, why don't we create a different range for the y? And here is what happens. I'm going to disconnect this, copy and paste this and put the range in the y. And watch this. When we have iterators iterating in parallel, what we are getting is a multiplication of the multiplication. And I'm calling it multiplication because we're creating copies of copies. So in this particular case, we are driving 10 times 10 and we are creating 100 spheres. So let me try something. Does this mean that if I create a third one here, make a copy, put it in the Z, we're actually creating a grid distribution? So essentially, by using these ranges independently of each other, we are creating 10 times 10 times 10 copies. And we can go and control these independently, both in size and distance. And just to go back a step, if I control all these through a single range, what I'm doing is creating only 10 copies at different distances per axis. So this is a linear distribution with just different spacing between the spheres. But if I want clones in all three of the dimensions, then I have to go back here and connect two different ranges. So this is scratching the surface of data flow and seeing how iterations work. We are going to see more of this and different types of iterations as we go along.